those of you who are just joining, welcome. We'll get started here momentarily. Um, everybody's on mute for right now, but please feel free to use the chat to ask questions during this um, presentation. Stand by, we'll get started here momentarily. Alrighty, um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for the securing ticketing payments with Bluefin and Agile Ticketing Solutions. We're excited to have our partners from Bluefin today to go over payment security and PCI compliance. Um, we'll be recording this session so that way um, everyone can get a copy of this to share with your staff and your team. Um, and we'll email it out as, uh, as soon as possible. Um, during the presentation, we'll have everyone on mute. Please use the chat feature to ask questions. Um, we will go over them at the end of the presentation. I'm Hope Biber. You guys, most of you guys know me already. Um, I'm the Director of Client Success for Agile Ticketing Solutions. Um, I'd like to introduce our co-host, Morgan Gines, Vice President of Relations Management for Bluefin. And I'll let her introduce her team that's on the call as well. Thank you, Hope. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Uh, pleased to meet the Agile Ticketing audience today, discuss the value of our partnership that can deliver to box offices and stadiums uh, worldwide. We do on the phone. We also have Nicole, and she um, heads up our partner marketing. So she's helped us put together this webinar today. She's going to be go throw going through the slides today for me to make sure that um, I'm on track. And then we also have Terry. Terry Ford manages the, the sales and relationship management aspect for Agile Ticketing. So he's he's working very closely with this team on a, on a daily basis and has already, um, you know, gone through this, I believe, since 2016, 2017. So um, he's worked with this team for many years. He'll be on the call as well to speak to any specific questions uh, related to the onboarding process with Luke. All right, perfect. Thank you, Nicole. All right, just a little bit of housekeeping items. I want to make sure, you know, we keep this, uh, you know, exciting. It, this is a presentation. We're just reading from the slides, right? So um, just a quick agenda. We will be discussing the Bluefin and Agile Ticketing Solutions Partnership that includes the integration, the functionality, types of attacks uh, that most often target ticketing clients, what that means for your business, um, how, how do you defend the fort or devalue the data, with our encryption and tokenization technologies, what do those technologies actually mean? And then how does that impact your PCI scope? And then how to take the next step with Bluefin. So at a high level, that is what we're going to discuss today. I'm very happy to be here. And then Nicole, I'll let you go ahead and move on and we will dive right in. <clears throat> All right, so Bluefin partnered with Agile Ticketing in 2016 to provide integrated payment processing through Agile Ticketing's POS system. Uh, Agile Ticketing recognized the importance to protect that credit card data and looked to Bluefin to add our gold standard security, its PCI validated point-to-point -point encryption solution. Uh, so far, we've installed 25 plus venues. Those stretch from Hawaii to the far Northeast and everywhere in between in the US. Uh, we are committed to aggressive payment processing rates if you uh, want to have your merchant processing with Bluefin, um, enhanced security, contactless uh, payments, and then white glove customer service. And that's really a differentiator of, of Bluefin outside of these security is the customer service. And I know that Agile has that same approach as well. So um, it, it's made for a really good fit for a partnership to date. 
Um, Hope, is there anything that you wanted to comment and add there about why Agile Ticketing chose Bluefin as a partner years ago, or did, did that pretty much cover it? So I think that covered a lot of that, but um, I know some of you guys, like uh, Michael, I think you're one of them. Um, Asha, you may be one of them that goes through your PCI certification every year. And um, if you don't have that PAX device, of course, that means your your questions are a lot more difficult and a lot longer as far as the certification process is concerned. So hopefully some of the things you'll learn today will help with that if you decide to go this route. Um, and um, it, it should make things a little bit easier as far as uh, that process is concerned, as well as the overall payment process and setup for your customers. Perfect. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. Hope that's I appreciate that. And just to talk about, you know, some some scary stats. I'm not going to read them off the screen. You guys can see them. But in general, we've seen a drastic increase in data breaches where payment data is compromised. Hackers are wanting clients' personal and payment information because it's valuable for them to resell. We've seen many businesses in the U.S. be prime targets over the years. Um, and as of late, major retailers. You, you know, we've heard of Marriott, GoDaddy, T-Mobile the Colonial Pipeline, and then even, you know, something that was really impacting me, Chipotle. Um, so, you know, there's big and small, all businesses um, have been likely impacted by data breach at one point or the other. Um, the United States is actually the highest country per dollar at 8.64 million on average. And the other concerning piece is that you can be breached and not know about it for up to nine months. So you've had a significant financial impact for several months and you didn't even realize it. And, and then also most data breaches, that number being close to 80% as, as released by the PCI DSS um, do contain PII information. That's that personal identification information. That could be a social security number. It could be you know a phone number, a birth date, what have you. So um, that's the unfortunate piece of it is that um, it's gotten worse over the years and, um, you know, more and more people are becoming impacted, um, you know, wh whether or not that they, they realize it. And then it's often after the fact that they, that they do realize that they were impacted and have already suffered financially and then their business from, from a brand rec um, reputation perspective. <clears throat> So the, what are the common threat vectors um, and vulnerabilities? So these are just the tools that hackers use. This, to me, um, you know, some of these are, you're probably familiar with, others maybe not so much. Uh, so malware is very popular. That This can be a worm, a Trojan, spyware, anything um, that could be unknowingly installed on your PC. And the intent being to steal that financial or personal information for a hacker to resell. So malware works, it allows a system in your POS to seek out the clear text information, that being the, the customer's full credit card data. Once the data is located and collected, the hacker can remove it for their personal benefit and they can sell it on black market websites. So this is something, you know, we've antivirus software, you know, you see all these different things, but that, that's really what malware is. Um, another vulnerability is weak passwords. Uh, this one is, is it's very easy because I, everything right now, you, I feel like I'm constantly having to change my password, change my password, and I just want to use the same password. It makes my life e easier to want to do that. I think we're all inclined, um, you know, to use something as a birth date or, you know, something with one, two, three, four. Uh, but weak passwords are a key entry point for hackers. So keeping those complex, even some platforms now um, have created, you know, certain rules, a capital letter, um, you know, some sort of symbol, a certain link. So um, ensuring that your passwords are dynamic and complex is very important to mitigate the hacking. Uh, phishing is also a prime target for fraudsters. Um, they can send emails to size as reputable sources and they're meant to garner a response that could include the birth dates and the credit card numbers. Uh, and then the last one I'll touch on is the cloud misconfiguration. Uh, these would be network systems that are easily penetrated. So this typically is because there's too many access points within the network. So it creates a prime target for a data breach. Um, and you've probably heard the saying, you know, pour, pouring like gasoline on fire. That's basically what happens with a data breach. So by the time an attack is uncovered, 
the damage is already substantial, both financially and then reputationally. So, um, and then Nicole, you've got the perfect slide up. So what do we do? You can defend the data or devalue the data. Um, and just before we, we talk about what that means, just a real world example, um, I always like to talk about is, you know, if you knew someone was going to, to steal from your home, would you continue to invest in, in more gates and more alarms and more security? Or do you prefer to have nothing valuable in your home so a thief doesn't even want to come in? Um, and, and when I think about it that way, um, you know, of course, certainly I wouldn't even want a thief to come. I wouldn't want to have to continually invest. I would not want him to come to begin with. So that's how Bluefin approaches data security. So you, you can implement more firewalls, network perimeters, monitoring systems, you know, increasing your security staff. All of this um, can compound financially, uh, or you can encrypt and tokenize the data. So if a hacker does get into your POS, there's not anything valuable for them to take. And so I, I like walking through it, um, you know, like that before we, we talk about what, what that actually means uh, from, go ahead and go to the next slide, Nicole. Be perfect, thank you. Uh, what that means from encryption and tokenization. Uh, these are, you know, these are very techy words, but if you really break it down um, into what they actually mean, I think it'll make a lot of sense. Um, we have two primary ways to devalue the data so it's rendered useless if a hacker were to get into your POS. Encryption is a technology that alters the makeup of that credit card so that only authorized parties can understand the information. So in this instance, there's not going to be any of that clear text credit card data across the network. So if they do get in, they're not able to pull back anything of value and resell that on the black market. <clears throat> then tokenization, it takes the sensitive information. It transforms it into a non-sensitive piece of information. The example I like to use here is a poker chip in the casino. So a poker chip in the casino is completely worthless at a Costco but it could be very valuable. It does mean something, you know, in, in a casino. So taking um, a token is extremely um, important to protect our data. <clears throat> uh, so one thing to keep in mind with encryption, the first one we talked about, is that not all solutions are created the same. So certified PCI validated PPE, that's the gold standard of payment security. And this is established not by Bluefin, but by the, the PCI uh, DSS. They established uniform encryption requirements um, that ensure the technology tracks the entire life cycle of the device through strict chain of custody requirements, whereas a non-validated device does not. They don't have those controls in place. They have some controls in place, but they don't track the life cycle of the device and have the same requirements that a P2PE device must adhere to to be able to be qualified as a P2PE device. And then what is Bluefin and Agile Ticketing Solutions validated P2PE solution? So Bluefin really takes a holistic and, and modern payment approach um, with our Agile Ticketing um, solution. It reduces the PCI scope, it allows merchants a safe and sleek payment option with EMV, and then most importantly, devalues the customer data as it travels across the network. So it ensures you don't have to ultimately worry about a data breach again. So the payment card data, it's encrypted immediately upon the swipe, dip, tap, or key into the P2P terminal, that being the PAX devices, and it prevents that flow of the clear text data and the customer's information through your network. The decryption of that data, it's not done until it's securely transported to a validated P2PE solution provider. So while that information is traveling through the device, it isn't decrypted until it's out of um, basically the hacker's capable hands of getting any of that information. So um, you, organizations realize significant PCI uh, compliance cost savings, as Hope mentioned, increased operational efficiencies, and they reduce that exposure of the cardholder data. So our integrated solution, it focuses on a true omni-channel acceptance. That includes mobile, e-commerce, in-person call center, and ensures every transaction is fast, easy, and safe. That's the name of the game. We want to make sure um, you know, that we're seeing not just safe payments, but quick and easy payments as well. And I went through some of those differences already. Yeah, thank you, Nicole. 
so with let's I, I do want to spend some time talking about this and um, knowing the importance uh, that Hope had shared, you know, regarding the, the SAQ and that nightmare survey no one wants to take. Uh, so the economics value for clients. So PVPE is the only solution that can reduce a merchant's SAQ scope that must be completed annually in terms of the point of interaction controls and security policies from 328 questions down to 33. That's the lowest it will ever get and it, unless the PCI DSS that controls this changes it. Um, so this is the most secure device that allows for the significant reduction in that annual survey. What does this do? I mean, it effectively re reduces your IT infrastructure and the staff needed to monitor and maintain compliant offices. That can result, depending on how large your organization is, in hundreds or thousands of dollars in cost savings um, when implemented. Now, um, on, the, on the POI, if you look on this, uh, the device controls, this is that point of interaction. So there are, um, we have a KIF, it's called, a KIF means a key injection facility. We have a key injection facility that um, works with the devices to tamper inspect them. They go through certain protocols as a part of their process to actually inject the the point to point encryption keys with the bluefin keys, and then that same location, uh, you know, is is where all of the devices are stored. So it's a very secure process. The the key injection facilities have their own um, requirements that they have to adhere to, but that. That is just an example of how you know the questions are be able are able to be reduced down to eleven on that specific piece is because of of what all the controls we have in place with the devices. It's very similar uh, for the security policies as well. The agreements that we have um, with with our KIF, the security awareness training, we have certain incident response procedures, et cetera. So all of this is sort of packaged up in the PDPE solution. We, Bluefin, has undergone um, the certain SAQs. We have to go through this as well, even as a payment gateway. So we've gone through that and been validated by the PCI Council to be able to offer this solution, which in turn means um, that the Agile ticketing clients uh, can, can reap the benefits of the 33 questions and, and the reduced compliance. And just to interject here for a little bit, uh, um, uh, Agile themselves also go through the same procedure yearly. Maybe not as big of a scope as Bluefin does, but we also um, go through a, a PCI com uh, compliance certification every year as well. And that, that's important, Hope. I think, I'm glad you called that out because, you know, I think um, what organizations sometimes fail to realize is PCI, it involves everybody involved, you know, in the payment transaction. You know, Bluefin is the payment gateway. We also offer the merchant acquiring. So, you know, that that's another component. Then the the ISV, in this case, you know, agile ticketing, and then and then the client. So it, everyone plays a part to be able to, you know, be compliant and and then also um, be involved in the PDP solution. Uh, so so what do we offer um, with the P2P solutions that we have. We have a couple of different options. I'm going to run through those now. Uh, we offer a fully integrated solution through the Agile POS system. Um, it's through Bluefin's PayConnects gateway. That's our proprietary gateway. We can accept credit and debit cards uh, backed by the P2P and tokenization technology we spoke to. Uh, we also have additional fraud tools. Some clients choose to add on, it, and it's based upon you know needs. I'll speak to this a little bit more later, but. Uh, we offer 3D Secure, a certified fraud, chargeback management tools, account updater, Apple, Google Pay for contactless payments. That we have seen an extremely significant shift in contactless payments the past 24 months. And um, the different fraud tools as add-ons that we have, those are depending upon how you're transacting. So, you know, 3D Secure, you know, that's primarily for clients uh, to prevent card not present friendly fraud. So that would be an e-commerce solution. But you know, we, we try to make sure that we have tools in place for all of our clients and partners, depending upon um, how they're transacting. We also offer a PayConnects uh, gateway only option. So this option means you can keep your existing merchant processing account and still extract the benefits of our P2P and tokenization security solutions. So we are able to do the merchant acquiring and that's actually 
all of the um, relationships that my team manages um, all offer an integrated solution with the merchant acquiring, merchant processing. But if you if you like your you know existing processor and prefer to have you know two two different platforms, then then we can still um, ensure that you have the security piece and the value of PDPE through the gateway that we have uh, picking at. Okay, and speaking a little bit more to some of those gateway features, um, I think some ones that, you know, most of our console partners and specifically probably as it relates to Agile, you know, we, we accept all payment methods, whether that's card present, card not present, and, you know, in that shift to e-commerce we've seen, mobile, even Salesforce payments, uh, we, we offer those as well. Um, if, if you are a company or organization that has Salesforce as your CRM, we're also able to integrate that into um, the P2P devices. You can actually um, process payments through the Salesforce CRM with the P2P device. So that you know that's very specific based upon the CRM, but still still important to call out. Uh, we offer recurring payments and an account updater solution uh, focused on delivering a full shop suite of contactless payments. As e-commerce, I, I mentioned it earlier, but you know it's becoming more popular. We actually have seen across our partners that were offering both card present and card not present up 80% uh, from three years ago, driving $3.4 billion annually. It's the, the Bluefin now is transacting more e-commerce payments than we ever have just because of the shift and that we've seen with the pandemic. And then the, the last thing to call out on that is we also support as the on the gateway only option, we support backend processing connections to Elevon, Tesis, Chase Payment Tech, Fiserv, and FIS. So we, we try to make sure that we have all of the, of the primary big players um, integrated into our gateway. So the Agile Ticketing Team um, has certified to our Pax A80 mobile device. This is an EMV uh, device that's also contactless to accept Apple and Google Pay. And I, I believe uh, that, hope you said, I believe yesterday that Apple Pay, Google Pay is set up through Agile. Is that correct? That is correct. If they, if they get one of your devices. So, so, and I know a lot of you guys have been asking for that specifically with the pandemic and everything, mm -hmm. just to, to keep it truly contactless so that the customers are not having to hand your staff credit card information. Um, and it just, it makes it a lot more secure that in that aspect as well. It does. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're seeing, this is, and it's interesting to see, you know, the shift. Uh, we, we, we have seen historically, you know, Apple Pay, Google Pay, it was an afterthought. Now it's one of the first conversations um, constant partners want to have because they want to go fully contactless. So that's, mm -hmm. you know, and, and great job to the Agile team for, for getting that integration completed. Um, wish you could push that urgency on some others for us. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I, I will just speak really briefly about a few other add-on options um, if you want to invest in a full data security package. So, the, and, and it, again, it's dependent upon how you're transacting. Shield Connect and 3D Secure, I like to talk about those together. They play together nicely um, as they relate to e-commerce. So um, with e-commerce transactions, one thing we have seen, and this is, you know, again, a result of the pandemic is uh, the transactions are bringing challenges in authentication and chargebacks. So a, a real world example would be a customer forgets to cancel their monthly Amazon Prime subscription uh, to keep up with their daily shopping habits or Netflix um, because they want to, to, to binge version or I don't know, I love that show. Uh, so that would be an example to where they, the, the charge could be disputed and it would be um, charged back and 3D Secure would cover that. Now, the reason is 16% of sales are lost because the issuer doesn't have enough information to authorize a transaction. Four times the number of declines in this card not present environment compared to a card present environment. Uh, so 3 to secure, what it does is it increases uh, the authorizations by about 20%. So you have a significant ROI, both volume, top line revenue. Um, and this, this is a general number. You know, there could be, um, this is what we've seen across all verticals. Um, it, but it, you know, it could be a little bit higher in certain spaces and maybe a little bit lower, but just on average, we've seen about 20% increase in authorizations. Um, 3 Secure is very specific in terms of the chargeback codes it covers. 
So, you know, if you do have a chargeback issue, one place I always say to start is um, what are the chargeback codes? Those should be found on all of the documentation. Um, it's different where it's located by processor, but you should be able to uncover what the chargeback codes are. Um, and, and there's a certain subset that 3D Secure solves for, and that would help with this. Um, we also offer fraud scoring. Uh, this solution works in real time. It sets scores based upon device fingerprinting, positive and negative list, and GLOCO. So you can make real time decisions based upon the scores delivered to you on the flag transactions. You would set the rules up in building this out and how you establish and set up those rules would determine which transactions were flagged. So it, it's a very cool solution. It's um, powered by Certify through our partnership with them. They also have a chargeback management solution. Uh, again, those two played together nicely as 3D Secure does with Shield Connects, but the chargeback management solution, it's a dashboard. It consolidates chargebacks from multiple processors into a single platform, allowing you to act based upon the rules you build out. So the value of this is um, if you ha do have a chargeback problem, um, it's, it's a no brainer in terms of being able to extract value. But if you have um, multiple processors, so if you had you know, the gateway only option and you had um, a merchant account with, with Fiserv or with Chase Payment Tech, um, they all have their own process for managing chargebacks. This would consolidate them all into one across all of the processors. So Hope, did you have anything to add on, on the additional products before we kind of dive into the Q&A? No, I think all of those are great. Um, and, um, I, I, you know, as far as the uh, 3D Secure, that sounds awesome for some of our folks as far as the chargeback information that they pull out of the system when they get those. Mm -hmm. So. Perfect. Okay, well, I think I think what we'll do now is next steps. So I, did, I did want to say before we jump in the Q and A, um, I, you know, please reach out to uh, you know Terry or the Agile Ticketing team, you know, through our through our landing page that's here to learn more about how to sign up to PPE. Hope I'm sure you as you as well are going to be following up with the attendees. I know you mentioned with the recording for those that couldn't attend. Mm -hmm. um, so you know the the sign up process is very simple. Uh, I don't. If you want to speak just a little bit, hope to what that looks like, that would be great. So um, for any of you guys that are interested in um, talking more about uh, getting quotes and all of that, um, you can send that to our support at agiletix.com email, or you can also send it directly to me at hfiber at agiletix.com. Um, and, and then we'll get the ball rolling with uh, Bluefin folks. So that way we can uh, make sure that everything is set up the way it needs to be set up. It's, it is fairly simple. Um, to get it set up um, once uh, they send the devices to you. Um, uh, now, there may be some folks that are wanting to um, look at it more of a way of putting it outside their kiosk in their box office. Um, so we may want to talk a little bit more about that offline if you guys are interested in some of those things. Um, but um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and open it up for questions. I'm going to let everybody unmute themselves as soon as I tell everybody they can unmute themselves. Let's see here. Are there any questions? Oh, you're already there. Mike, Asha, Crystal, Heather. Any questions? I know some of, um, and Crystal, did you guys have Bluefin, don't you, already? So we're talking with Terry. We haven't actually signed on with them yet. Okay. Um, but this is helpful, but it'll help push us along in that direction. Well, um, this is Gabrielle. Hi, Gabrielle. Gabrielle. Hey, Campus Theater. So funny that this just worked out that way, but we are, we were trying to go online today. Um, so we have the devices. Uh, I have to ask Terry or Hope, um, I do need the Apple Pay. Even more and more students come in. If, if that's not in our package, we need to add it. 
<laughs> but that's something I can, you know, I can do in an email. That's, that's fine. Um, okay. What, what was funny today when I was talking to uh, JB at Agile, uh, he was trying to connect us, um, that the PAX A80 we have has uh, the capability of putting paper in there, like there's a paper roll attached. So he was really surprised that when we did a transaction to see if it works, that it spit out, the machine itself spit out a, a receipt, a small one. And then the printer that is connected to the terminal also spit out a receipt. So he said he's never seen that before. So I'm, I'm just curious. Wait, we, can, we can turn one off, I believe. Right, I would turn off the one that the little roll on the machine, if I can take it just out, is it still gonna work? I guess that would be a question to Morgan. <laughs> Maybe you know. <laughs> so, so, so we, so most of our POSs have receipt printers attached to them because a lot of our our organizations are art houses and small movie houses, and they don't have giant ticket printers with the hard ticket stock like you get for the concert. So they use those receipt printers to actually print. And we also have a payment format that we put in for those that don't have the PAX devices. Um, so, so which, uh, so. I know that we can turn off the option to, to turn the receipt off on our end versus oh, okay. on the PAX device end. But what she's asking is if we take out the receipt paper on the PAX device, will the PAX device still work without the receipt paper? It will, yes. And, and okay. we have, yeah, we, we have, um, we, yeah, we, we can walk through, you know, how, if there's any questions about removing that, but yes, it, it will still oh, no. work. We, we do have clients that, that don't want to use that. So that, that's not an issue. Okay. I was just wondering if I, if I take it out, it's still going to work. We got one terminal to work and we, we will continue tomorrow. Okay. Hopefully then by tomorrow we're going live. Great. It's really exciting. Well, um, the way today went, it, it didn't work out that great. <laughs> well, I was going to say, and, and here, here's the thing. Uh, you know, we've got the capability um, on those POSs to decide if we want to even print any receipts whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, there's a diff there's different functionalities as well that we can go through. So, um, so yeah. Well, and it, even in within the gateway, you know, that we we have um, the capability within the gateway to turn on turn turn and turn on and turn off receipts. So, mm -hmm. and more and more people are going receiptless now. So, you know, we. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. The other thing is uh, we do have, what is the process to get PCI compliance certification? Because I know my boss right now is trying to get this done. What, what can I? So have you, so have you already started filling out the paperwork and everything think, for it? I think she did. And it's uh, now we have, we are still with world pay. So, uh, so we, you know, there is the second, hurdle we have to take but I guess it would help her out to really where to look where where would she best find all the information uh in the p2p um portal or or in the agile portal I guess that would be really helpful well I I, I know that we we have certain questions on the ticketing side that we answer and I can have our, our compliance officer send you that information to plop in there. Okay. Um, uh, Morgan, I, I wasn't sure if you guys actually had uh, answers <laughs> to help well, them answer so certain questions. <laughs> we're, we're not allowed, um, we're not allowed to guide merchants on how to fill out SAQs because you know, to your point earlier, we, we all have to fill them out. So uh, but what, what resource we typically use is, and I'm going to Slack, if, I think I can put it in this. In, in the in chat. chat. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, let me do that. So let me pull that into the chat. I hope it lets me chat. Okay. So the PCI Security Standards Council has an FAQ section. And if okay. you go to that the FAQ section, it it is actually one of the, it's probably because it's so complicated, but it is one of the better um, FAQs that I've, I've actually ever seen. So they have a document library. It allows you um, to search for the, for the, for the specific SAQ you will be filling out. Okay. And then you can download that and it goes through um, just general 
you know, how, how to feel, how to respond to this type of question based upon how you're transacting. It, it really breaks it down. Um, there, the one I would really lean on um, and that we got merchants to is the PCI DSS quick reference guide. And um, that that has been our what I would call this the source of truth because the, the this security council the PCI SSC they're they're the ones that you know established these rules so that you know there's a lot of other educational websites but this is sort of the source of truth that really guides you through that. Okay, good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and I will I will also make sure that that link is in the email along with the recording for everybody. So. Great. That way you have easy Perfect. access to it. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Hope. Any other questions? Hope. Yes. Let's see. This is Heather at Salina Art Center Cinema. Hi. And we've been using Bluefin. We, we went live in December and it is su it's such a wonderful change from WorldPay. I, you know, it's WorldPay <laughs> is a nightmare, nightmare to get out of. It yeah. was a nightmare. So just for that other theater, I mean, I jumped through hoops for three months, wow. basically mm -hmm. to get out of that. So, you know, we have just, you know, our, our customers like the packs, you know, our, my, my employees like it. It just has been such a wonderful change for us, such yeah. a positive change. Oh, and I have you recorded, Heather. Woohoo! I know. <laughs> <laughs> very often but yeah. no that's what we like to hear that I would do appreciate that but and what I always say is you know and, and again you know the my side typically that I, the partners I typically work with are are all doing the merchant acquiring with us but you know the the value of any partnership and and is you know there's always going to be something that's not perfect you're never going to find a, a payments partner I'll say that a payments partner that has everything you need but you know it's the the ones that are you know focused on security and then the support because you guys obviously have great support from from hope and the agile team but that you know that white gloves customer service is what you know i know terry and just the bluefin team always try to provide and i, I think that goes a long way you know it, it really does and so i appreciate those comments and you know we'll we, we certainly try to focus on that the reporting is really great too. I can go on and, and actually see what went on that night or throughout the month, which I never could do that on WorldPay. Sure. So I can actually just go back and reconcile everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to tell you that, that we are probably gonna make this, we, we didn't wanna do it all at once because we had such a nightmare going on with our previous you know, software. So. But I'm pretty sure we want to get out of world pay at some point. Once we, I think we have to get used to the system first, and then we say, okay, now we're ready for the next hurdle, and that will be getting out with world pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Better start the process now. It sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I want to hear all about it, uh, all about the hurdles you had to. Seriously, I don't, I wouldn't even know where to start because you cannot get a person on the phone. And that's, yeah. yeah. So, we had two we had two WorldPay accounts and you're on hold. I mean, I was literally on hold probably 90 minutes to 120 minutes every time I called them. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll get the two of you together. Yes, get the two of you, because I'm happy to talk. <laughs> and yeah, and I was going to say, and I, you know, and I, I, we, we've been talking about possibly doing first Mondays with our clients as well, kind of doing these kind of sessions as well, so that there are, kind of round tables to discuss some of these other kinds of issues that are out there. So I'll definitely get you two together so y'all can talk. Great. Thank you. You're yeah. welcome. Any other questions? Nope. Nope. Oh, nope. I'm good. Well, I want to say thank you all so very much for joining us today. And I want to thank um, Morgan also for um, taking the time out and all of the Bluefin team um, putting this presentation together. I knew this has been very helpful for uh, our clients. Um, be on the lookout for an email from me with the recording. Um, and I'll get with, uh, May, uh, with Morgan and Terry to see if there's any other things that we need to put in that email that you might want to use, such as that um, PCI security standards link um, and anything else.
Yeah, and then the other thing, and, and it may not come up, um, some organization, this wouldn't be for, as a part of the SAQ, but one other thing to mention, um, because Bluefin does go through, you know, the same SAQ process, we have our cessation of compliance. So if you need a copy of Bluefin's AOC for your auditors or anything like that, we have that, uh, we can send that out at any time. So just let us know if that's that's a need. It's not always a need, but some people want it. So we, we can have that as well. All right, my friends. Well, it's so good to see everybody's faces and those of you I didn't everyone. see. And it's and for those of you I didn't see your faces, I know your faces, and it was good to, that you were on the call as well. As always, feel free to email me or send it into support at agiletix.com. And we look forward to talking to everyone soon. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Take care. Everybody. Have a great day. Thanks, Thanks Bye. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. I like the end of call because customers talking about customers is real helpful because you have to go through the same kind of bumps and bruises.